welcome back, Dynasty lovers, to another episode of the Dynasty Interview Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Adrian, with my co-host, Scott Martin. And we're back for the second group of tight ends, then. And I think we're the best one on this on this show. I was, uh, I, like I said, I, I get tight end fatigue. Won't, won't bore you with uh, my tight end, uh, my tight end uh, dislikes. But uh, the first guy we have here is uh, could be something special then. And so that is Trey McBride out of Colorado State, 6'4", 246, 10 and 1 8 inch hands. Make sure you get that 1 8 in there. You can't miss that. And at the combine, he did not run. Do you actually don't. Do you have do you have a, co- a combination of his combine and pro day numbers? Yeah, so at the combine he was had 33 inch vertical, 55th percentile, 117 inch broad jump, 60th percentile, 18 reps on the bench was 39th. He had a 4 5 6 40, 89th percentile at his pro day. And then production wise, uh, decent production 2019 took a drop in 2020 probably with a COVID shortened season then. But in 2021, 90 receptions for 1,121 yards. But get this, one touchdown. How do you have 1,100 yards and one touchdown? Poor quarterback I, play. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, that, that, how. That def, definitely was poor quarterback play. But you, you think you'd fall in the end zone a few more times. But uh, yeah. So, but uh, other than that, uh, Trey McBride. I have here as the most complete tight end in this class, and it's really not even close then. He is a very good route runner. He gets off the line very well. He fights off uh, the, the press press coverages uh, very well then too. He has natural hands then. Only had three drops with all these targets in the whole year then. And he's a hands catcher. I, I, I need my tight ends to be hands catchers. And his contested catch, he is excellent at high point in the ball. And uh, it's and I, with that high point in ability, these excellent hands, why don't you do some just some lobs to the back corner of the end zone and let the guy work? I, I, <laughs> that alone, you should have like five touchdowns there in the year, but uh, didn't see that. Um, and his body control, he, he is never out of control. He's great. He has... Uh, uh, Wonderful at, at even trying to get that first. Well, he's wonderful at getting that first foot down, and then he tries to get that second foot down. So that translates to the NFL as well, then too. And uh, physicality is not afraid of contact. Yards after catch, he catches the ball. He's quick to get up the field. I don't know if he's a, a huge jack guy, but uh, definitely gets those yards he should every time. Then and then I I, didn't, I don't know if I saw that four five six speed. Um, I, I saw probably more that four seven speed. I'm I'm seeing on the film there. Uh, but that's that's a very good number from the uh, 40 standpoint. And then he's an aggressive blocker. He has great leg drive, and uh, probably the best, the best, or if not the best, one of the best, or if not the best blockers in this class. Then, so he's going to get uh, seen the field early. He is guaranteed to be a, a second round pick, and maybe someone sneaks in that first round to get him then too. But uh, he's he's definitely gonna be the first time off the board. It's not even it's it's not even a question. So what grade did you give him? 80. Wow. Um, yeah, he, he graded really high for me. Um, he's, he's not Kyle Pitts, but he 85. So I, I, I really like Trey McBride. I thought he was the cream of the crop. Um, he's as complete as you can be. And he's, I I wouldn't be surprised to see him be a first round pick. I think that's pretty much a lock. Um, uh, in the NFL draft, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but he, he gives me Travis Kelsey vibes. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be Travis Kelsey, but he's, he's got potential to, to be that kind of guy. If he gets the perfect spot, um, you're talking about a guy that's got super quick release off the ball, uh, and has wide receiver footwork in short area space, uh, with, uh, you know, he, I don't know that I thought he had four or five, six speed, um, but he's got elite level, top level, you know, top end speed. Um, he, he can definitely get down the field and stretch the field. Um, his route running is excellent. Um, he operates super well in the short and intermediate areas. You don't get a lot of like deep downfield throws. Um, I thought of that a lot of that's got to do with a lot of that's got to do with quarterback plays poor. 
Um, but lots of out routes, and there's not many linebackers uh, that can cover him. Super sure hands. He caught almost 75% of the targets thrown his way and only had three drops on 122 targets uh, and had 91 catches. Uh, just effortless, super sticky hands. Um, he He's a guy that does good, above, definitely above average with contested catch. Uh, and his he doesn't have the biggest catch radius, but it's really good. And his ball skills are definitely above average, plus, plus body control. And I was looking at him. I was like, you know what? He plays like a power forward. And he and then I go to look, and he does have this sort of some basketball background. So that might be where he gets that. He was an excellent athlete in high school. Yeah, and um, you know, very physical through the catch. He drags guys after the catch. Um, so uh, he's he's super tough to bring down. He has definite yak potential in that regard. Um, and he is ready to play today as an inline blocker. No problem. He's ready to play today, um, you know, as a receiver too. So he's he's definitely the cream of the crop. Um, like him a lot, and uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's pretty safe. I, I think he's a he is a lock to get in a good spot. Yeah, no no doubt about that. Moving on, next up is Chigazium Okonkwu out of Maryland. So six foot two point five inches. 238 pounds, eight and three quarter inch hands, ran a four, five to 40, and I had a 35 inch vertical at the combine. So 94th percentile 40, 78th percentile vertical. And uh, had a pretty good uh, 2021, had 52 catches, 447 yards, and five touchdowns. So you want me to start with uh, Chig here, or do you want to please start with with him? I would love to hear your (laughs) thoughts. So, Positives, very athletic. Best and only use is probably in the screen game. I don't know if I saw that four five two forty. I think he's more long speed than than short area quickness. But he's he's an athletic athletic, athletic guy then. Um, but very basic routes. Suspect suspect hands then. Definitely a body catcher. Had five drops in uh, two thousand twenty one. His ball tracking, uh, I, I didn't see much downfield, so it's tough to evaluate that then. Um, and I, I think as far as a blocker, he's not not the best then. <laughs> so I, at best, I, in the NFL, we're looking at a guy that can is an H-back. And honestly, these H-backs in the NFL don't really offer much as far as a fantasy potential. So I have him graded pretty low here at 63, and he's maybe third lowest in the class. I... I like I said the athletic potential is there, but I maybe in the right spot, but it's gonna take a it's gonna take a lot it's gonna take the absolute perfect landing spot to have any substantial fantasy production going forward. Somebody's gonna draft this guy because he runs four five two, uh, and then somebody's gonna take him way too high in the rookie drafts. Uh, but this is a guy you need to just just flip the page on. Um, he's he is he is fast. But he can't play like it. He mm-hmm. and you when you can see it when you watch the gauntlet drill. Not only does he not trust his hands and for good reason, but he just can't run routes fast. I don't understand how you run four five two, but your route running is like that of a five flat guy. I mean, there's literally linemen that can run faster, crisper routes than him. I, I was super super unimpressed um, with his. Uh, it's just like he's jogging to the openings. He's never like trying to make quick cuts. Um, so uh, he was below average there. And his release off the line is he's very he's easily rerouted. I mean, I know he's a little thin, but he's only 6'2". Uh, five drops on 65 targets. Definitely a body catcher. Um, and... And he's he's going to catch the ball in in traffic. I mean that's that's a positive. What few he got, he he seemed very unaffected. Um, but he doesn't have the ball skills that excite you. Um, he's he's going to offer yak ability if you have him in space, like you run him on a screen. But he's not going to get any separation to get open. Um, so he's it's sort of all wasted. You have a guy with home run potential, but no way to get him the ball. Um, and he can't block. 
he is probably the rawest and most undeveloped blocker, worst technique I saw in the class. So he's a guy that that's second from the bottom on my board. And after that, man, after that combine running that 40, I was like, man, this is going to be another one of those uh, Okiwe Boonhams. Yeah, and as a Penn State fan, he had a pretty big game against Penn State, and I saw some, he had two touchdowns as well, and I saw some potential in a guy I was interested in, but when you dive deeper in the film, it's not as pretty as it looks <laughs> uh, from the, uh, the, the, the the view from uh, 40,000 feet, feet up then. Yeah, tough, tough um, to make a highlight film on this guy. Yeah. So moving on, next, Cade Oten out of Washington. 6'5", 247, nine and a half inch hands then. Did participate in the combine, but do you have his pro day numbers? The problem is he has a lower extremity injury that kept him from sort of combine or for pro day performance. So we don't have we don't have much there. And as far as stats, he was a four year starter at Washington then, but uh, the highest receiving total he ever had was in 2019 with 344 yards. And then 2021 had 28 catches for 200 for just 250 yards and one touchdown. I'll let you start with uh, with Oten here. So this isn't a guy that's going to have the production, and this isn't a guy that you're going to see a lot on film. But this is a guy that has potential. Um, he he has some plus traits that uh, definitely you know to say he had bad quarterback play would be to put it mildly. Um, but uh, he's so he's definitely hampered there. Uh, I think he's going to be taken in the draft, sort of probably fifth round, somewhere around there, maybe late fourth. And I think you're gonna. This is a guy that is going to be a good stash um, or a good waiver pickup. Um, he's so he has above average release off the line. He has big strides, which eats up space pretty quickly. And he's above average as a route runner, very crafty, uses speed variation very well, similar to the way Charlie Kohler does. Um, and uh, he he can cr- it helps him create some separation. And he runs a variety of routes with really nice feet. Um, so he's above average route runner. Two drops on 43 targets. Um, and one of those drops was just a horrible pass. So really one drop. Um, and he has very natural looking hands, catches the ball away from his body well. Um, so uh, some upside there. He's comfortable working all over the field. He catches the ball in traffic pretty well. Uh, he's got above average ball skills. Um, he can sort of reach back and contort his body and, and catch some of these poorly thrown balls. Uh, and he's he's a he's got above average physicality and and he's he can he can break a few tackles and get some yards after the catch. Uh, he's not particularly elusive, but he's not just only gets what's there. The top end film speed, I expect. I don't think he's going to be a burner, but I think he's going to. I think he's going to be a little above average. He's he's a little bit. He's fast enough to put the linebacker make him a little uncomfortable. He's not going to outrun everybody, but he's got he's got good build up speed. Uh, good blocker, ready to play in that regard. Um, so I, I think he's pretty solid there. I graded him out as a 69, so he's he's sort of at the sort of the bottom of the people I'm interested in drafting. Um, but he's somebody I'm likely going to leave every draft with a flyer on. I think he's going to be drafted a lot higher in the NFL draft in the fifth round. I think he's going to be probably more that third round could sneak into the back end of the second round. See, there's I, a lot of people that like him. I think on film. He could fit that third to fourth fourth down. I'm just worried about the injury. I don't know if that's going to knock him down. So that's why I said fifth. But he he's got talent. I, I think he's probably a better NFL player than a fantasy producer at this point, based on what we're seeing in the film. I don't know if it's just Washington, and they don't like it's using Washington. the tight end. It's Washington. But he was he's probably one of their better players on their team, and he wasn't utilized very much. But I think he did everything solid. He he had a lot of similar traits to say Trey McBride, but Trey McBride did everything better. Uh, so I, I have him at a seventy four, uh, and just had that like I said, Trey McBride did everything better. And uh, uh, but uh, he, is this guy going to be like his the former Washington second round pick 
Drew Sample in the NFL, or is he going to be more of like that Austin Hooper type player in the NFL? He is I Austin Hooper. The, Austin Hooper is a the, great comp. That's exactly who he is. He's Austin Hooper. Yeah, and, and, and it's going to take the right offense. And hopefully he's more in that Atlanta offense with Matt Ryan as opposed to that Cleveland offense with Baker Mayfield and that run first. And that's what it's going to come down to. Like I said, I, I have him as my third highest graded tight end just because I see him doing everything well and he's sort of uh, graded out that way. And uh, I I think I could, if, if he gets the right spot, he could get a big boost as far as dynasty, if he gets a, a spot where he's buried, he's going to be uh, buried in fantasy as well then too. But uh, there, there's, there's potential, and I wish he went to a different offense or a different school, and I could have seen that from the receiving aspect because it, it was it was tough getting uh, watching film and seeing him used only two or three times a game. Then it was it was it was tough, and we actually had one of one of the film he put up there was uh, from a 2020 game. Uh, where he actually was utilized a lot, and he looked he looked great in that game. But uh, I just wish it would would translate more from the at least as far as the the Washington offense. But like I said potential's there, and uh, a guy uh, that's higher up on my board. Yeah, I'm surprised you graded him higher than I did. I thought I really liked him. He got a 69 for me. Yeah, he he, he was my my third at 74. Then, uh, uh, and then the next guy on the list uh, is Jeremy Rucker out of Ohio State. He was actually the uh, the top tight end prospect in the country coming out of high school. And he's uh, uh, at the combine, weighed in at, well, measured out at 6'5", 250 pounds, had 10 and 18 inch hands then. He did not participate as far as the uh, the time drills, but I think he had a combine. Do you have those numbers? Yeah, so he had 19 reps on the bench at the combine, 47th percentile. And then his pro day, he decided to go back for some more, and he got 22 reps, 69th percentile. Um, but he he has this foot injury and currently is in a walking boot, so I don't really know the extent of it. But he uh, he didn't he didn't run. He didn't run at all. And then at production, he was the starter for I think three years. But and then this this last year, 2021, was his best production. But he only had 26 catches. Yeah, this year two catch yards, per game guy right here. And uh, and three touchdowns. So sort of like uh, a Kate Oten. Jeremy Rucker did not do himself any favors by going to Ohio State. They're more of a wide receiver and run game type offense as opposed to that that tight end. And uh, it, it was another one that was tough tough to watch. I think he did things solidly, but he wasn't asked to do much. He didn't run a lot of great run a lot of routes. Then um, he was utilized a lot as a blocker. Uh, I think he's a, a willing blocker, but it can get eaten up by defensive ends. So I don't think he was the necessarily the greatest from that standpoint. He had one drop. He has he was uh, so uh, decent hands, but I saw a lot of double catches at times. And the one catch uh, in the end zone, uh, I saw he had a, a double catch on that as well. So things to watch out for. Um, he has good body control, good ball tracking. Uh, not really asked to do the contested catches much at all at the Ohio State offense. They didn't use him at all in that aspect then. And then physicality is okay, but uh, I think he's a guy to watch. But like I said, I think there's potential here. Um, he's not as good as Cade uh, Oten on the film, but he's in that third tier landing spot potential. I think he's uh, sort of a guy that could translate better to the NFL, but I don't think he's going to be a big time producer. Um, I don't know what you saw. What your yeah, with, thoughts those, are. with those remarks, what what was your grade? He got a sixty nine. Yeah, sixty two for me. So I I thought he was a less athletic Dalton Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he has, uh, I don't know. I mean, he is a little above average release off the line. His he doesn't really separate well on his routes. When he does get the ball, he is legit wide open with tons of room to run. Um, he won't operate well against man, and he he needs to like his damage will be done against zone. I think uh, he's um, his hands are plus. Uh, he had a few one-handed grabs, which that's kind of cool. Um, he reminds me of what's that guy from uh, Trey McKitty? Trey McKitty. He reminds me a little bit of him. Um, oh, Trey McKitty's super athletic, though. Oh well, yeah, I know Jeremy Rucker, but, <laughs> but he's got those kind of like he catches those one-handed catches you didn't expect. 
I guess that's where I'm thinking. But okay, um, hands wise, Scott. Yeah, hands wise, <laughs> hands wise. Um, a little above average ball track in a little above average body control. You'll see him catch a few back shoulder throws. Um, he's he's physical. He's he's physical, but he's not dominating as a blocker. Uh, but he's 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 a little above average physicality wise, and he's just not going to offer you much after the catch. He'll break a few tackles, but that's about it. And he's not going to run away from anybody. His speed's very average. So, literally, he's just average, 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 average. Unless he has a great landing spot, he's not draftable for me. So, I'm uh, yeah. Ohio State tight ends don't tend to fare well in the NFL. Yeah, I don't know why these tight ends, these these high rated tight ends go to Ohio State. I, I, I schools that utilize tight ends more are like you see you see Penn State, you see these smaller uh, uh, smaller schools then. Um, I, I think, he, like I said, he didn't do himself any favors being a top-rated prospect in high school going to Ohio State. Um, he, he could have been better utilized at a bunch of other programs, but uh, we, we will see. And like I said, I think, I think just based on his pedigree and he, like I say, he's solid, but he's not doesn't didn't really show anything necessarily special on the film. But like I said, I, I have him hired just from that aspect because I think he's more well-rounded tight end as opposed to these guys that are only receivers these guys that are only blockers and um so they just uh, i gotta keep an eye on them next up cole turner nevada teamed up with carson strong here so 6'6 246 9 and 7 ancient hands then ran a 4 7 6 40 had a 27 inch vertical 120 inch broad jump a 7.063 cone and 17 reps on the bench at the combine so 46 percentile 40, 76 percentile broad jump, 4th percentile vertical, 69th percentile 3 cone, and 27th percentile bench press. In these last two years at Nevada, was very productive. 2020 had 49 catches, 605 yards, and 9 touchdowns. And 2021 had 62 catches for 627 or 677 yards and 10 touchdowns. We, we discussed him a little bit before the show started, so I'm going to let Scotty go first, and then I'll tell you what, what to really think. Oh, I'm excited <laughs> about this guy. Love this guy. Um, at one point, I was like, oh, man, is this guy going to be competing with Mr. McBride and Kolar for top tight end in this class? Um, and he, see, he got a 76 for me. He ended up as my number three tight end. Um, so... Uh, he's he's Robert Tunyon to me. I, I love this guy's athletic ability. Um, real, real excited for him. He he was a wide receiver and changed to tight end in 2020. Um, and not only did he put on the weight needed, um, but he, he turned into a very more complete prospect a lot quicker than people expected. Um, so I think teams are going to love him. But release off the line is a little above average. His he his route running he operates really well in the sort of underneath and intermediate areas. He can use some more sort of route tree development, um, uh, with like with some sharper routes. Um, but this dude plays almost exclusively split out. He gets some separation, but not great separation. So he relies on his sort of ball skills to to beat people. That's dangerous at the next level. Um, if you were a wide receiver. Because a lot of times that doesn't translate. Those are the guys that everybody's got pretty good ball skills, and if you don't have the other, you know, sort of speed or ath, uh, you know, athleticism, you don't really stand out. So I'm glad they moved him to tight end because he can stand out there. Uh, excellent hands. Three drops on 93 targets. He has flashes, one-handed catches on tape, um, and he he makes a ton of catches, man. Um, his contested catch rate is very good. Excellent catch toughness. I mean, he goes up and gets the ball and at its highest point, and he, he's excellent there. Body control, best in the class. Uh, I mean, we're right there with Trey McBride. Um, he can catch those back shoulder throws, no problem. Off target throws, no problem. Um, and he just excellent, excellent jump ball receiver. Uh, excellent red zone target. Uh, and he just locates the ball and finds it as well as anybody. Super physical. Um, he is. He literally is a just bully ball. And you don't expect a guy transitioning from receiver to tight end to be this physical 
not maybe not as a route runner, but a, a going up and getting the ball. And uh, so he's uh, good physicality. He doesn't have great yards after the catch, so he doesn't break a lot of tackles. Um, and he doesn't have like super. He has very average top end film speed, but the guy's a good blocker too. He's uh, he's. I thought he was very solid. I thought he was more physical than you would expect. Uh, and I, I thought he was, he's obviously going to have to grow there because he doesn't have as much experience as others, but I thought he was a solid blocker. Um, I, I really love Cole Turner. Um, I I would leave any, as long as the landing spot's okay, I, I'd probably take this guy in the third round. What was your grade on him? 76. So I'm going to tell you how it really is then. Yeah, so I give him a 65. All right. All right. 65? <laughs> so we, yeah, we, we dip for him more than anybody in this class, I think. Uh, but positives, I agree with you. Contested catch, he's tall. He goes up and gets it then. Uh, I think he has very good body control. He can track the ball very well then. Um, but then things start to break down. Um, he's slow off the line. He is uh, susceptible to getting bumped off his routes then. He only wide, he, he, like probably 90% of the time, he's lining up as a wide receiver. And... Uh, he, when he does, when he's asked to be in line, he still goes out and routes. So he's rarely blocking. But when he does block, I don't agree with you. I think he's a terrible blocker. I, I, I see guys go low on him because he's too tall and he can't get down low to block them. I see guys go through him and just flatten him. And uh, like his physicality, he's not physical. Like I, I see that he was a wide receiver before because he is still a wide receiver. He is a, just a slow, giant wide receiver. He's not a tight end. He is more of a J.J. or, or Sega Whiteside than, or maybe he more a, a, Robert a Semi Tunyon. Benko. He's Robert Tunyon coming out. Robert yeah, Tunyon had Robert to learn Tunyon how to block, block. man. <laughs> yeah, he had to learn how to block. And and if he hadn't tore his ACL last year, he would have been a pretty solid tight end. Yeah, he, I, I don't I don't see it with with Cole Turner. Like I said, I, I it's going to take a lot of development. And a lot of time and the perfect situation with Aaron Rodgers <laughs> to uh, to help this slow giant wide receiver to be productive from a fantasy aspect. Then it, there's too many too many question marks, too much development, and uh, maybe I'll draft him in the fifth round. But I I you're gonna you're gonna be any, any leagues we're in, you're gonna be taking him way before I am. Oh so yeah, I'm not gonna see. he won't leave the fourth round for me. Ain't no way. Yeah, it, I I just don't see it. I. I uh, and, and honestly, it, it was tough finding him on Nevada. They had a lot of tall wide receivers. Did you give that trouble in too? They they, they had a they, they must no, have the, like the, the average secret, wide receivers of six four. Yeah. When, so this the way you find guys is you look at their feet, look at their shoes, look at their socks, look and see if they have any leggings on. See how sort of the dark their skin color is of their legs, and then look and see if they got sleeves on. That catches ninety percent. Of you'll be able to identify them right off the bat, right as soon as yeah, but before the snap. Sometimes in, be, in between the plays, it's like literally a fraction of a second. But this guy was easy because he was lining up, like not even in the slot. He was lining up outside, yeah, fifty percent of the time. Yeah, he's good. He, he's a, he's a, he's still a wide receiver. Like they may they may list him as a tight end, but he's a wide receiver. He doesn't do tight end stuff. Well, you don't get points and for blocks I, in fantasy, so give me this guy. Well, yeah, yeah but I if. No one's going to start him as a wide receiver like they do for Nevada because he's not good in that aspect. And no one's going to start him from a tight end standpoint because he can't block. He's not going to see the field. and he's gonna, I will be shocked he's if waste he's not away drafted your, in the fourth round of the NFL draft. Well, he I, I can say he's going to waste away on your practice squad. And by the time uh, he's due to come off your practice squad, you're going to have to cut him because he's not going to be a, an ass, a, a, a starter on any, any NFL team. And uh, like I said, I, I just, it's going to take a lot of development. And I think it's a wasted pick. Uh, I know every fourth or fifth round pick is <laughs> more waste, but I, I would take a guy that offers more upside, more potential, and I, I'd be drafting maybe more that Dolchek uh, or uh, Oten then or Ferguson over this guy, and I'd take Likely over him. I'd take Deuce over him. Like I said, he's he's pretty low on my board as far as the tight ends here. And uh, like I said, any draft we're in, you're going to be taking before I am, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Next up, Jelani Woods out of Virginia. Actually played his first three years at Oklahoma State. So at the Combine, 
He clocked in at 6'7", 259 pounds, had nine and a quarter inch hands then. At the combine, he ran a 4'6", 140, and had 24 on, uh, reps on the bench then. So uh, fill us in on his pro day numbers as well. I think you have them written down. Yeah, there's there's a lot to break down. Um, there's a lot of conflicting reports on weight across all of the major resources. Um it, after the combine was over, the reported weight was 259. And because we were thinking he played a lot bigger than that, uh, we were thinking he was a lot heavier during the year. At his yeah, pro up, day, up in the 170s, 175. Yeah. I mean, not, not 175, uh, up in to 275 range, uh, possibly even bigger. He looked he looked bigger at Oklahoma State. He looked like a, a absolute monster. Yeah, now we watched his actual pro day live footage. And he weighed in at 252 there. So he did lose a little bit of weight sort of in between that time. But, a little bit. He, he cut yeah. 20 pounds. Well, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you played at 275. From the season, um, yep. But uh, so his at combine, you said the 46140, that's 83rd percentile. He had 24 reps on the bench, which was 86th percentile. At his pro day, he tore it up. 37 and a half vertical, 93rd percentile, 129 inch broad jump, 96th percentile, 6, 7, 8, 3 cone, 98th percentile. Wow. And I, I watched the footage. We watched the footage of that three cone, and it, it, he's fast. Um, so, man, I don't know what there, what kind of trainer he got, but he, he, he definitely picked it up. Um, Super, super athletic. Yeah, and then as far as his production, he didn't really have much at Oklahoma State, just a few uh, 300-yard seasons. And then this past year at Virginia, he had 44 catches, almost 600 yards then, and eight touchdowns. So uh, I don't know if you want me to start on this guy or what I saw in the film, or you want to take take the lead here? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and take the lead. I like this guy a lot. Um, even before the pro day numbers come out, I liked what I saw on film. Um, afterwards, man, alive! I didn't see some of these numbers on film. Um, I thought he was not bad, but goodness sakes, um, he's uber athletic. Uh, so his so just from the top, release off the line, that three cone blows me away because I, his first few steps I thought were labored. I thought he had off the ball, he was sort of below average speed. Um, and then even though he's like super physical, they could slow him down even farther by jamming him. Um, he, he could shed the cover, you know, the coverage just fine, but um, he could still be slowed down a little bit. Uh, his his route running, um, he's he just wasn't a good crisp route runner. He would sort of throw people off to the side at times and win with his physicality. Um, and he could run a few like he has an okay route tree it definitely needs more to be more refined um but uh so definitely some work there but a little above average uh five drops on 71 targets and i thought he caught the ball away from his body like a wide receiver um so he he really makes some nice uh you know tough catches um uh, back shoulder catches uh, it's just he had some inconsistency periods where he dropped a few balls but but pretty solid contested catch I mean, tops. Uh, he was 11 out of 18 opportunities at 61%, and, and it, he he shows it. Um, safety, safety is shy away from hitting him, and I, I don't blame him. Uh, guys just kind of fall off of him like gnats. Uh, he's a big dude, man. Uh, and his, his ball skills are excellent. I thought he had plus ability going up and getting the ball. Um, I didn't expect he jumped 37 and a half inch vertical. Jeez. But he, he showed some plus ability there, and there's nobody more physical than him. I mean, he's he's top-notch. Uh, he's going to break plenty of tackles, and good – I mean, just good luck bringing this guy down. Uh, you, you better you better make sure you get your uh, your pads on the ground and hit him in his legs because he's, he's – he, you're not going to bring him down uh, without multiple tacklers. Uh, and and he's he needs some more work and better technique as a blocker, but um, he's – he's – got the potential to be a mauler as a run blocker, and uh, this definitely has the athleticism. He's still raw, but he has elite upside. I mean, he has he has the athleticism that makes you salivate. So 
Um, he, he came out as a 71 for me, which is the fifth in my class. Um, but, man, I, I there's no doubt I will get a share of Jelani Woods in every draft. Um, hopefully he goes somewhere very nice. Yeah, because when I was watching the film, I, I saw a very, very slow release uh, off the line then. Uh, it's just it, it was probably the bottom of the class when I was just watching him. And he's able to get up to speed with he's a, when he's a, a long strider, but – I didn't see that four six one by any means as far as his top end speed then, um, and then like you said, like his his routes weren't crisp. Um, he did have some separation based on his size then I thought, but it wasn't anything the greatest. Uh, as far as his hands, I wasn't I wasn't really impressed. He had five drops on the season and he caught he did a lot of double catching that I saw on film more more so than I like to see, and he didn't necessarily look natural to me as far as hands, so I wasn't uh, too impressed by that in the film. Um, I know you said he had a good contested catch score. I, I know the, the games that we had, I didn't see a lot of contested catches, so that's more of an incomplete score. Um, but this dude is extremely physical. Like it is, nobody wants to tackle him, and uh, people were getting run over. He was just destroying people, and uh, <clears throat> he's not like a big yards after the catch guy, um, other than running people over. Then, but I, with this relative athletic score, I, I, I have him coming in at a sixty-eight. Which is probably middle of the class, but uh, I think he, I, I, I almost guarantee he was playing at in the two seventies at two seventy five during the during the season, and then he cut a lot of weight here in the off season prior to the combine, his pro days, um, and it definitely definitely showed on his uh, scoring as far as these measurables. Then, so I think on upside alone, he's near the tops of this class. Then just what what he can do. But like I said I. I, I I have questions about his hands as far as uh, that being natural. Um, but uh, if he can square that away, I think he has great potential. And I forgot to mention, he's, his blocking is probably uh, some of the better blocking in this class. Well, you better block pretty well when you're 275 <laughs> and you're like another lineman out there. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think I, I'm very interested to see where he goes now. And if he can keep that weight down and keep this, this athletic – prowess that he's untapped here um i think that's very interesting oh and another note is this guy was actually a quarterback coming out of high school so he's pretty raw and uh, i think the the catching is not very natural for him but he was a top 25 quarterback when he signed with oklahoma state and was going to be a quarterback but they switched him over to uh, uh tight end here um do you have his age by chance yeah so when the season starts he'll be 23 yeah so like I, I said this i, I i'm not going to grade him on what his pro day looked like. I'm going to grade him on what the film looked like. Um, yeah. But uh, so, I mean, it, it's all you can do, but upside's yeah. tremendous. Uh, yeah. The, the film, the film score, like says a 68, but I think he's going to get a big bumps as far as his, our final score. When we factor in that draft capital, I think someone just based on his athletic proudness alone, he's going to get drafted higher. And then when we factor in these, these combine scores, and if, team, day scores, if teams believe bump. teams believe that he is that sort of athleticism and they can sort of tap into this rawness and develop it, he'll go second round. Yeah, we'll be, it, we'll, we'll know we'll know what other teams think because he he'll go high. Yeah, like I said, I, I wasn't I, I had him mill the class as far as this goes, and I had him draftable, but definitely uh, a guy you want to pay attention to. <laughs> And then the last guy on our list here is Jalen Watermeyer out of Texas A&M. So 6'4", 255, 9 and 3 quarter inch hands then. Did not participate at the combine. And I think we have a pro day stat. I think he only did his 40. And it was pretty poor at 5.03. Yeah, so he, he also jumped. So he had 35 and a half inch vertical which is 78th oh, that's, percentile that's that's pretty good then and his 40 you said 503 was second percentile yeah and and uh as far as production uh he had three very productive years at texas a&m uh pretty much had almost 500 yards each of the seasons and uh, this past season 40 catches 515 yards and uh four touchdowns but as far as Jalen Watermeyer, I know when you you told me about that that forty and the you said you didn't really like him too much when you're studying the film, but uh, so I was expecting to to hate him, but uh, I actually came away liking him a lot based on this film and seeing I I, I did him after Jelani Woods and his release 
uh, from the line there is pretty quick. One of the tops I, in this class. I, then, I want you to tell me the grade for every category as you go through it. So release off the line, I gave him a seven. I thought he had uh, very good route running, nice crisp routes, uh, creates very good separation. So I gave him an eight there. Uh, hands, he had eight recorded drops on the season then. And I actually saw a lot of concentration drops, and his quarterback tend to gun it a lot. Um, and uh, But he looks actually looks pretty natural as far as catching. So I, I gave him a, a six there. Um, but I, I think just based on the film, I would have probably given him higher if I didn't know that he had those eight drops in the season. Yeah, so uh, let can, me let me give input there before you start going over the ball skills stuff. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Release off the line, I gave a 7-2. Um, I thought he had uh, above average release. He doesn't. I didn't think he really separated well. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, he he plays split out. He can run routes outside, so that's a plus. Um, but I thought his route running was just, it was a little bit above average, but I thought his separation was poor. Um, so I, he only got a seven for me there. Oh yeah, I, th- I thought he I thought he created good space there for a tight end and a guy's size. But and then you mentioned the hands; those eight drops on seventy targets is is relatively high. Um, and he at his at the combine, it was he was embarrassing. Um, he he dropped so many balls uh, and just didn't look. Uh, he looked like he was Mitchell Wilcox out there. Um, just didn't take it off the face. Uh, so I was really disappointed with with his performance there. And I I sort of dug a little bit to see if there was some injury, and there actually was. He had a freak off-the-field accident and tore a tendon in his hand. I don't know what he tore. I don't know the extent of it. I don't know if he had surgery. I couldn't find that. But that happened sort of in between this last year and, and this year. And it shows because he, he went from being very solid hands to – not catching the ball so well. So I don't know if it's in his head or if there's injury problem, um, but I docked him pretty good for hands. Yeah, I think it, I think it was more the quarterback this year. I, I'm not sure if the guy, the guy was a, a freshman, but uh, I heard the, the announcers on the, on the film said it multiple times that uh, he likes to gun the ball, and uh, you're never going to fault this guy for having a lack of arm strength. So I'm a, I don't know if that – he just wasn't used to this guy's uh, throw mechanics. But if he gets with Tua – <laughs> if he sat, <laughs> just nice little lob in there. Yeah, but, there you uh, go. All jokes aside, then. But I, 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 I think I thought he looked natural when he was catching. But yeah, the, the eight drops is concerning then. And then uh, he's very good at contested uh, catches. I thought then he catches in tight space. Yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, he's able to catch it and hold on to it after getting some uh, big hits. And I think he tracks the ball very well. I think he has a uh, very good body control. He always seems to be in. Uh, in uh, control of his body and then and not really uh, moving all over the place then. So I thought he did that. And I thought his physicality, I, he, he's very good uh, after the catch as far as breaking tackles. He's a very strong guy. He can carry carry guys then too. So he got uh, plus marks for that. And his film, like I said, I I, I think he's much faster than that 5, 5.03. I had him more as like, almost like a 4.7, maybe a 4.75 in the film then. Uh, he looked he – looked more fleet of foot than that, than a, than a maybe a little bit faster lineman. But I, I, I'm not sure where that came from. I'm not sure if he trained at all before the 40. Uh, he probably shouldn't have ran at all if he was going to run a 5.03. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too impressive. And as far as blocking, I he looks okay at times. Other times he looks looks bad. Uh, I think there's something to offer there, and he has room to improve. He needs to sustain his blocks better at the next level uh, to be uh uh, every down tight end then but like I said I, I I liked him he actually graded out as a 72 which is uh about fourth in this class then so I I, I liked what I saw um but yeah the, the drops and that tendon I'm not sure what that means as far as him going forward uh if it's more the quarterback or the tendon but uh I I, I I like him and I think he's definitely on my board then and a guy I'm gonna keep an eye on yeah so I I wasn't as impressed he came in at a 65 for me um, I, I saw everything you saw with the ball skills. So contested catch, excellent. Ball tracking, excellent. This guy's got a good highlight film. If you watch only that, you're going to come away super impressed because uh, he can make those catches, especially when he was a freshman. Um, and sort of his sophomore year, he he looked great. Um, he just His production and his 
everything declined every single year. Um, so he's that worries you. Um, but good ball tracking, really good body control. Agree with everything you said there. I didn't think he was as physical as he should be given his size. Um, and he he broke. He only had six missed tackles for us. So, I mean, I don't think he breaks as many tackles as you think he does. Um, but he's he is slow. I thought I didn't think he's not five oh three. Like, don't get me wrong, he's not five oh three. I think he's probably four eight flat. Um, he's not he's not he's not faster than that. I don't think. But his uh, his he's just. I don't know how you run that poor. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, there isn't any reported injury, so he just had a bad. I mean, and he jumped too, so I don't. I, I don't think that. I think he just ran a bad forty. Maybe he stumbled coming out of the blocks a couple times. Who knows? But um, and then I agree with you everything on the blocking. He's he needs some more technique. Uh, needs to sustain blocks. Uh, but he's he's an average blocker. He'll do fine there. He was a wide receiver in high school, so he's still developing some in that regard. Um, but I, I mean, he's draftable. I mean, I'm not going to leave a draft with without drafting him. Um, but he's going to go a lot higher for people than, than I want to take him. Uh, there's a lot of places that have him really high up the board and, and that's not me. Um, definitely not me. He's sort of in that last draftable tight end category for me. Yeah. There's a, there's some sites that have him as their number two, as high as a number two overall prospect at tight end. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what film they're watching. Other places have him middle pack. Other places have him in the sort of bottom end. So it's it's a wide range of things uh, for this guy. Then, um, but like I said I, I saw positives there, and if he can capture more of that 2019, 2020, as opposed to this, I, th- I think that drops for the, the main red flag uh, this this past season. And like I said, whether it's due to the quarterback, whether it's due to the tendon, uh, it remains to be seen. But I, I, I there's potential here, and he's. Uh, Definitely a guy I'm keeping an eye on then. Um, but, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I didn't think Jelani Woods looked that fast as that 4-6-1 on, on, on the film. And I definitely – definitely uh, Jalen Wademeyer did not look that slow at that 4 0 yeah, maybe 4 4 3 Maybe Texas A&M needs to check that stopwatch. Uh, Spiller didn't run a very good 40 either. So I don't know who – I don't know what happened there, but maybe their lasers are off. Well, they need to get a Virginia stopwatch or an LSU stopwatch. Those, yep. those seem to be yep. the best ones. <laughs> yep. Or or someone is uh, uh, saying, I'm going to draft Texas A&M players. I got, I got to make them look bad. So they they, they mess with it and uh, <laughs> going to get these guys in the cheap then. Yeah. Who really knows? But, uh, yeah, I, I think there's potential here. I think he's a – I think he's a – I don't think he's a, an elite athlete, but I think he's athletic enough to succeed at the next level then too. But uh, – we will see, as always, landing spot dependent. Landing spot dependent. So that finishes out our tight ends here. So if you want to see the film that we are seeing, uh, go over to YouTube at the uh, the Donnie Steet interview. Uh, subscribe, see all these videos, uh, make your own assessments. Then too, uh, check out the website, thedynastyinterview.com. Yeah, uh, profiles for these tight ends will be up shortly. And then uh, hit, us up, hit us up on Twitter at the DYN interview. And uh, you can let us know what you th- uh, think of these prospects then t- there too. So, uh, yeah, but like I said, it's going to be a fun draft. And uh, I think there's some potential here at tight end. Uh, I just we will have to see uh, how everything sort of lands out here going forward. Yep. Um, definitely leave your comments below. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You see... Some of the film, I don't cut up every single game we watch because that's that's not possible. <laughs> um, but uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, the tape's there. Watch it and tell us what you think. Um, if there's somebody out there that we haven't scouted, we don't have video on, let us know. If you want to, and uh, you know, you want some film on them, we'll take a look at them. And uh, yeah, we love this draft season and can't wait to do the wide receivers next and close this class out and get these draft boards finalized and. You know, enjoy the enjoy the 29th. It's going to be a fun, 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 fun draft. Yeah, because definitely let us know because even Scotty and I, we don't see the same thing on a few of these prospects. And uh, we like different things and come out with different opinions then. So, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Well, that does it. So this is Joseph Adrian signing off. This is Scott Martin, and you just listened to the Dynasty Interview Fantasy Football Podcast.